Welcome to Blowing Smoke with Twisted Rico. I'm your host, Steve Ricardo, and believe it or not, this is episode number 92. I can't believe it. I don't know how you can believe it. Okay, we had to do some last-minute scheduling this time around, and it, this kind of stuff happens, but Keith Bennett, long-time hardcore metal dude, long-time hardcore Boston metal dude, an all-around good guy, came to the rescue and did an interview with us, and we talked about all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, Panzer Bastard, Wrecking Crew, early Boston Hardcore, Venom, his first record. He tells a fabulous story about the Kiss Rock and Roll Over record. I'm not going to tell you anymore. You just have to listen to it. It's great. And uh, stick around because after the interview, we're going to talk about the outlets because uh, I have a couple things I want to tell you about them. All right, before we play this talk with Keith, I want to play you a track from Mr. Bennett's band, Panzer Bastard. This one's called Grave Robber. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Blowing Smoke with Twisted Rico podcast, Keith Bennett. Boo. <laughs> and the crowd goes Is that mild. a good enough introduction? That's the best I've had in a long time, man. So how are you, man? I'm good, dude. I'm really good. It's nice to say that and not lie. <laughs> yeah. First of all, I want to thank you for bailing me out because people don't know this, but you're a last minute guest. I got you <laughs> the day before. I wanted you on the show, but I didn't plan on having you on today. Bullshit. But I had to... Bullshit. Of that course, always, I wanted you. Always on the a bridesmaid, never a bride. Look at me. The <laughs> story of my no, life. No, you know you're busting my yeah, chops right I now. Am. But uh, you did. You did. You're helping me out by coming on. And plus, I know we're going to have a lot of fun here. I'm sorry. And, and I got so much stuff to talk to you about. So I'm going to just get right into it. Okay. Did you like grow up in the Boston area and yeah. where? And how did you get into music? How did you get it, get started? Okay. Um, I grew up uh, right right over the. I grew up on Beacon Street. And uh, in Boston, well, ah, I should have just a block and a half over the, the line, like the right, right at St. Mary's T stop. You know, when it, you're leaving Kenmore on the green line on the uh -huh. C train, when it comes out, that stop, the first one that comes above ground, that, that was my neighborhood. So you had that right at the T stop was all like uh, Beacon Supermarket, uh, the Granite Five and Ten, Carlton Pharmacy, uh, Colgin Rugs, and then you'd, cr you'd cross, um, cross Carlton Street, like that intersection, Carlton and Beacon. And uh, I lived at 1070. I, yeah, so I, I mean, I grew up. I could, you know, I could walk up to, I'd go up to Kenmore Square. Uh, like when I got a little older, when I learned how to ride a bike, I'd go up to Kenmore Square because they had, um, there were like different, you know, there were different like newsstands and right. st stores. They're all gone now, and, right? Yeah, oh, they're all gone. Yeah. But um, yeah, like some would have different selection of comic books and some would have better. And there were a couple of um, like Tomb of Dracula. The uh, the place that you, that before it was store twenty four, it was like another just like newsstand like convenience store, um, but th that was the, that was the only place in the area that had Marvel Tomb of Dracula. So I'd I'd, I'd take my my bike up to Ken, <laughs> to Kenmore and get Tomb of Dracula. Did you go to high school right in the Boston area? Kind of. Technically, I went to I went to Brookline High, but um, so 
I had I had gone uh, up until from first grade to eighth grade. I had gone to private schools and parochial schools, and it, like it, great education. But you know, it, um, just everything else around it, like the doctrine and the social thing, it was it was pretty twisted. It was pretty like Pink Floyd, the Wall kind of thing. But <laughs> but. I, you know, I, I pleaded with my family, um, you know, when it was time to go to high school, I'm like, listen, you know, I'm a, I'm a good student. I've, I've never not worn a jacket and tie and I don't even know how to talk to a girl. Can I please go to public high school? Brookline high is a really good school. Wow. So first day of class freshman year, I've got, you know, I got, I got my Iron Maiden shirt. I got my leather jacket, got my earring and I, t- I take the subway to work. I'm like, well, I mean, sorry, subway to school. Uh, you know, I'm like, oh, look, there's girls and you know, everybody's wearing jeans. This is great and then i i sit down my first day of class in freshman year and i was getting uh, the books they were handing out like all all my curriculum stuff i had in sixth and seventh grade not not bragging because i'm a fuck i'm an idiot but i'm like holy shit so and on top of that it's open campus nobody was going to yell at me if i just got up and got on subway because like right around then i was um i was starting to hang out in kenmore like i had been going to you know hardcore and metal all ages shows so you know, I did you I, go, was that at the Rat? You did that? Oh yeah, the Rat and the pa- Rat, the Paradise and the Channel, yeah. You know, and then you know hall shows, right? Um, but y- yeah, so uh, I it was like guilt free. I'm like, holy shit, you know, like I've got a couple of years head start. So yep, yeah, screw it. I'm going to Camor. I'm going to hang out. And I I really I never I never really went. Like I kind of hung out like a couple for a couple of months before before i really started meeting people in the in the hardcore and metal scene in boston um i had a few friends and i'd meet them you know in kenmore and then would go and that's how i would meet other people right. like everybody else but um maybe probably till about november i would i would go i'd be on the the brooklyn high campus but i wouldn't go to any classes I'd this hang is out. as a freshman yeah yeah and then <laughs> but then like i just realized it was like you know i didn't like any of these people they didn't like me and I, I found my home. I found my family. Do you know what I mean? It was this whole. Yeah. The, I, 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 I found out. I got directions to the island of Miss, the island of broken toys, and boom. Then I, I was just gone. So you didn't finish high school? No, no, wow. no, no, no. So I, I officially dropped out halfway through sophomore year. But I, I was long gone. I was long gone, like before Christmas in my freshman year. Did you ever like get a GED or anything like that, or did you say nope. the hell with it? No, no. But I mean, but the thing is, with that, it's, it's not bragging. I was really blessed. Um, by, by my family, my uncle in particular, I was, I was blessed with a love for reading. So oh. I, ju- I just like, I mean, for an idiot, I do like, I do You're like to learn. You're pretty intelligent for someone that doesn't have a high school degree. I have to <laughs> Yeah, it's like, hey, for, for the guy with the face tattoo and missing teeth, you talk a good game. It's all bullshit. It's all smoke and mirrors, wow. man. It's, this is facade. So, so you mentioned the Iron Maiden t-shirt. So were you into metal like when you were a kid? Is that oh, yeah. was your first love? Well, my, I mean, my first love, I think with a lot of, because I'm 51, so I think with a lot of people my age, it was Kiss. And, Kiss, yeah. And... Uh, I fell. I fell into Kiss. It was a beautiful, beautiful accident. I was seven, so I went, and I wasn't. I've said this before in a couple other interviews. I wasn't this cool hip, you know. I wasn't like Lester Bangs or you know Rodney on the Rock, you know, like or Cameron Crow. I wasn't like that. I wasn't this wonderkind. What happened was, um, back in the seventies, you'd have storytelling records, and you know it'd be like horror movies, and you know, it just you know it was almost like radio broadcasts on a record, and you would come with a comic book. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. those. And, yeah. and you'd hear the beep, and you'd have to turn the page of the comic book to go along <laughs> with the show. So I didn't have any. I didn't. I mean, the music I knew was Lawrence Welk, the Osmond stuff that was on TV. I didn't even know about radio. And one day I was with my with my grand aunt, and uh, to get you know a storybook you know Keith, you know my mom gave her five here's here's five bucks you know keith can get his record but my grand aunt refused to go into the store but she waited right at the front door at the record store and i did i'm seven i don't know how record stores work i don't know about alpha alphabetical order or anything like that and i'm just walking around there in a panic and she's stamping her feet screaming at me from the door like keith edward leo kirby bennett you have two minutes i'm not i have no time for this nonsense i'm pretty sure she even said shenanigans and i'm and i'm panicking i'm like ha 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 and rock and roll over must have just come out because i know i wasn't digging put your hand in my pocket and grab onto my rocket did i tell you this story before no holy shit oh wait a minute okay it gets better so I panic and I just grab the and I look and it's you know the cover of rock and roll over yeah. or any Kiss record Good cover. you know to a seven year old to a seven year old to a seven year old 
it, you're, they're going to look like superheroes. So I just grabbed it. Didn't know what I was getting. Then it, the ride home in the car, I pull it out of the bag and I'm looking. I'm like, what What the F is this? And I, turn, I flip it over and I'm like, making love, take me, <laughs> ladies room, <laughs> rocket ride. I'm like, what, what is hard luck woman? What is this? But then when I put it home, I put it on. I didn't even have like, we, you know, we didn't have a stereo. And what I had is I had a plastic <laughs> Fisher Price Peter Pan record player. So I put it on, and the first the first rock and roll song I've ever heard in my life officially played was like "In the Morning I Raise My yeah. Head," and I'm thinking of days gone by. We're not supposed to sing on the show. Oh crap! Well, this isn't singing. I mean, is it you heard me? But you know, you hear "I Want You" is like da 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 da. I want you, baby, and you could just see the horns pop out of my head. I'm like, yes, this is it. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. But um. When you were you were saying that line. Well, I, know, I, I, I know. You know, it's funny. I got to tell you, when I was in high school, I was a senior. I think. Well, that re- maybe it was out for. A, I can't remember the exact year it came out. But I used to hang out in this trailer <laughs> in, out in Webster, Mass, with all these guys. <laughs> We'd go and get high every day and smoke weed. We, I, you know, we start smoking weed early in the suburbs in the city too. I'm sure. And uh, I was a big Queen fan, but those guys would never let me play Queen. They weren't cool enough. Kiss, though, was God, right? Oh, yeah. And I saw Kiss in 1978 at the Hart- Hart- Hartford Civic Center. But that rock and roll over record, oh, my God. If, if Kiss Alive didn't get enough play, that record was played every day. I know every word yep. on every song yep. on that record. Dude, me too, man. It's, that was landmark. But what I was going to say is, like, you just freaked me out when you're talking about that line because probably about a month after I got it, and I was that was it. I was Kiss Army. Um, I would sit. I would sit. I would. I would sit in the living room, and I I would sit on the coffee table and have my have my grandmother's knitting needles, and I'd use the couch as a drum set. So I, I got I got rock and roll over the only record I own on the Peter Pan record player cranked, and I'm just banging away on this. And at the time, it was um. My my family's like, you know, Boston Irish Catholic family. You know, everybody lived in the same apartment. My uncle, this is before he got married and moved out. He, he's, well, obviously, he hadn't moved out because he lives there. So, <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. But um, he comes he comes home from work one day, and I'm just oblivious. And I'm like, I'm like put your hands in my pocket. <laughs> Grab onto my rocket. And I think rocket maybe got out of my mouth. And next thing you know, it's like, I'm floating in the air. He had grabbed me by the back of my shirt. Cat, like, just basically threw me into my room, door slams, and all of a sudden you hear it's like, Jesus Christ, Joe, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then you just hear crash, crash, crunch, crunch. He he sh- sh- snapped the he record. Broke your record. Snapped the record in two, and um, but to my mother's to my mother's credit and to her eternal, uh, you know, appreciate regret <laughs> she uh three days later i get this knock on my door you know and she's like if you tell your uncle yeah i gave you this i'm selling you to the gypsies and it was another copy of rock and roll over wow. so I was, yeah mom yeah, yeah mom. so point, yeah points Good points to mom. mom and in my uncle's defense he is he's one of the greatest guys in the world you were man. young though he was figuring yeah yeah I mean, young, yeah, yeah seriously but you know he's a, he no one help. usually makes me cry this early into a show by the way oh. that was funny because i had a feeling where you would go i don't know why <laughs> but that 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 record so so kiss was your first oh, and yeah, then yeah. what happened after that um go, Black Sabbath, and it's funny that we're talking today because it's it's Bill Ward's birthday. Bill Ward is oh, 73. Love Bill Ward. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, I got a Kiss record, once again, by mistake. Because I, I, me, me, and, me and learning things aren't very good. <laughs> I uh, I thought it was the same deal that I was in the... Uh, hurry up, get your record, and get out of here. Only this time I was looking for was a Kiss record. Was this like Newberry Comics or something? No. Or? Oh, God, no, 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 no. This was... Um, this was actually because uh, my grand aunts, uh, Esther and Marie, <laughs> they lived in Situate. And Situate. So, so they'd, the Irish Riviera, they'd, uh, my, my mom in the summertime would ship, like I'd spend two weeks down there and then two weeks up in the city, back and forth, back and forth. And it was great. It was a great way to yeah. like grow up a little kid, like because near the ocean. Oh, dude, it was, yeah. it was beautiful. You know what I mean? And it was like, and I was with all the burnout, all the kids down there, like it was Zeppelin, Rush, Jethro Tull, Yes, Ted Nugent. You know, but it was weird. They all hated Kiss. Like, I'd get my ass kicked for liking Kiss. It dude. was really weird with yeah, Kiss, yeah, man. Yeah. People yeah. either loved them or hated yeah, them. Yeah, so there was, there was uh, Kiss, which was, you know, the Kiss Army, and then Aerosmith. And was, was, the, was it the Blue Jean Army? 
That was the, that yeah, was their yeah. crew. Yeah. So all these guys were blue jean army. So they were all older. You know, it was like 16, 17. Some of them had mustaches. You're like, whoa. <laughs> you know, you're like the, the, the Levi's jacket with the fr- the, 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 the the sheepskin <laughs> collar and the work boots. And you're like oh, homemade tattoos. Like they all one day. I remember they they all um, gave themselves uh, with the needle in the Indian. They all gave themselves blue oyster cult tattoos. <laughs> And I was begging them for one, and they were like, "They're like, you're nine, you know." It's like, it's like we're all criminals. Well, you got a yeah. good start, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got, um, it was the same thing. It was, it was the Hanover Mall. I think a place is called Record Town. And yeah, it, it sounds was, like one of those chains. And it was yeah. Grand Aunt Esther. She's yeah. outside. She's, Kate Edward, Leo Carby, Bennett. Shenanigan, shenanigans was mentioned again, and once again I panicked. And it was I got we sold our souls for rock and roll because you know oh, the, yeah. the S on the cover kind of looks like the Kiss S. And with that, I mean, I, I knew it was a band. I knew it was going to, I mean, I had heard of Black Sabbath, but I had never heard them. It was like, oh, this is a, you know, this is like, you know, um, the, the, the head criminal, the head teenage criminal was Bobby Fuller. And I'm like, oh, this is a Bobby Fuller band. <laughs> I'm like, well, great. Maybe if I, if I have this record now, he won't, he won't beat me up all the time. Wrong. But so it was this. It, and once again, it was the same thing where you're you know, pulling the record out of the bag. going, What is this? Because that record, you open it up. And there's the, the 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 dead chick in the casket, <laughs> you know, holding across my like, ah! and I slammed it shut. What's your I was uncle's terrified. name? No, 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 no. My uncle, my uncle wasn't wasn't near. I oh, I knew I knew enough to kind of you know keep that Stay on the away DL. From that uncle. Yeah. But then I remember being in my room, and the first so- side one song one is Black Sabbath, and I'm sitting there, and it's you know, and I'm already freaked out by the the dead woman it in the coffin. It was scary, wasn't it? And then all of a sudden, you hear the rain and the tolling bell and the da na and they're singing about Satan and ah, but I loved it. I loved it because I I was all about you know, creature double feature, hammer horror. Uh, you know, Tomb of Dracula. You, you know, I mean, I loved, I love scary, scary stuff. That was stuff. the scariest thing. So I remember the scary. first time I heard that. The hair stands up on your arms. Yeah. You're like, oh my god, it's like so freaky. You don't oh. know if these guys are Satan or what the hell yeah. they are. And, and, and then um, I remember uh, being really um, uh, with the song Iron Man. I'm like. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm, well, that's, that's on because we sold our souls. That's a greatest hits record. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, okay, so, you'll listen to greatest hits. So I'm right. here at Iron Man and like, you know, you, you go through the song and I'm like, kind of like identifying. I'm like, <laughs> oh, nobody wants him. Nobody helps him. Now he has his revenge. And it's like, wait a minute. It's like, oh, whoa. You, because, you know, when you're a little kid, you're just like, oh, you know, everything, there's always happy endings. The good guys always win. You know, it was like, whoa, wait a minute. He, he kills everybody. That's his re, oh, oh, that's, that's, Whoa, that's heavy. Then that was Queen. You're talking about Queen, Queen News of the World. I you know, the cover that. that. It's yeah. like, it's the guys in Queen and they're dead. Like, you know, it's like, and I'm like, yeah. and I'm looking, I'm like, oh, so it, that must be, that must be Black Sabbath's Iron Man killing Queen on the cover. You, you know, and then, um, then Deep Purple would burn <laughs> when I heard that. For, probably from Bobby Fuller, you know, it's, it, it, you know, David Coverdale singing about the witch kills everybody. Also, devil. That, hearing that song and it's like you know everybody in the village gets killed I'm like whoa that's heavy and then he also says devil sperm and I'm like whoa that's a twofer holy crap wow yeah. your yeah. teenage years you make them sound more exciting than than, than possible that, that wasn't but Steve again, the teenage years were, were a tornado man. A that was, I'm not even man I wasn't even 11 kid that was <laughs> so um, wow I, that's some good <laughs> stuff right there um, when did you actually start playing an instrument uh, th- there's a good argument Your that ba- I that bass. I haven't. Has it I, always been bass? At the- um, no, no. It was um, when it started. It was uh, once again back in situ. Our our neighbors um, w- were Portuguese. There's a, there's a huge Portuguese community down there. So it was the Irish Riviera, and then a huge Portuguese community. And our neighbors. Um, now I feel I feel like an asshole because I forget their names. But um, the the patriarch because they they had a clan over there, like a whole a whole whole multi-generational thing it was really cool they were really beautiful people uh he gave me a mandolin oh his actually his name was jose and i'm not even lying his name was jose uh gave me a mandolin i was eight or nine you know and i just looked at it as a fat guitar you know like a miniature fat guitar and i just remember you know i didn't know how to play i didn't know anything and it, i remember it was like you know split and cracked you know he just gave it because he'd see me you know with a tennis racket in the yard you know Put your hands in my pocket. Grab was like, oh, let, let the fat little Irish boy take the hose. I give it to him, you know. And it was one of those things. But I remember um, trying to strum it and have it, getting a blister the size of a golf ball on my, on my thumb. I'll never. I don't know why, but I just always remember that. But then I, I realized that I, that's what I wanted to do. Like they, I was being groomed to be a, a hockey 
player, uh, like a hockey player. Sounds protege. like a normal kid growing yeah, yeah, yeah. up in New England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's like the Irish Catholic, like you know, road to glory. Street it's like, hockey. It's like he, he, you do. He, here's what you do. You get, you're gonna do. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna dominate. You're gonna dominate all through, all through. You know, Pee Wee, and then, then um. Then we're going to get you into a good school that that starts in seventh grade and goes to twelve, so you can start playing hockey with the big kids. Yeah, at, at, you know, in seventh grade, and then then it's BC, and then BC law, and everything's. He's like, <laughs> guess what? Wrong, wrong. But but um, but the whole time, like while I was, you know, they they were they had their plan, you know, and then I had my plan, and it was something was like, okay, Terry O'Reilly. It was really, really cool. Number 24. Like, oh, I got to Taz. And, and I still love him. He's still cool. But geez, this guy from Kiss breathes fire, spits <laughs> blood, flies. And, you know, he sings songs about meeting them in the ladies' room. You know, he's Dr. Love. It's like, okay, Terry O'Reilly. It's like, so, so Terry O'Reilly is cool, and he's a hero, and he's violent. This guy is cool. He's a hero. He's violent, but he, but he, he's getting cut, laid. But yeah, but he, and it's like, it's like Terry O'Reilly can beat up everybody in the world. But, you know, you think you're a little kid, you think it's like, well, I think the guy who spits blood and breeds fire and flies kind of has an advantage over Terry. No offense, you know? So it was kind of like, I'm going, I'm going over here. I took, I took the left hand pass. Good choice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good choice. Yeah. So, so, and then it was, it was, um, I had, I had, uh, like a, an acoustic guitar. Uh, around ten or eleven, it was one of those applause uh, ovation applause ones, the plastic ones. Yeah. And I remember, I remember, I always remember for some reason, like uh, Nancy Wilson from Heart would always play one. Yeah, and I, that's not why I love Heart, but that's not why I got it. I, th- I think I got it just because it was like you know under a hundred bucks kind of deal. Yeah. Um, but then when it when I got um, when I was twelve, it was a straight. I it was a straight up shakedown of my family. They were like, you got to get confirmed. You got to make your holy confirmation. I was already done. I, I already had my first. I was a Catholic too. Yeah, I know what you went through. I had had my first cut off vest, and I was already like, you know, in it. And I was like, tell you what, I had already put. I'm like, I had already put twenty bucks down on a, a flying. A, it wasn't a Gibson flying B. It was a court. You know, it was like you know, entry level. You know, knockoff thing uh, at a, at a place up on. Uh, Comav by our house. It was called Z Music Labs. It's right. It's right up between where where we lived on Beacon. And um, up by the old Aerosmith apartment, up by thirteen twenty five Com Ave, and uh, just little little tiny hole in the wall music place. But I would go there, you know, and like I I'd, I'd give them five bucks. I sometimes I'd give them quarters to get the twenty to hold this guitar. Lay away, lay away. And uh, then I said, listen, I'll 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 get confirmed if you buy me this guitar. And then after that, it was it was game on. But then I heard Motorhead, and. That that was that was it. If you kiss kiss had a, a very profound effect on my life, obviously, but nothing nothing can ever ever touch um, the impact that that Lemmy had. It's Is still, that why he started does. playing the bass? Absolutely, wow, Absolutely. that's great. No, I mean Lemmy. Lemmy every, everything honestly, everything begins and ends, and it, it, for me with, with Lemmy, like the two people in my life, um, Lemmy comes in second. My uncle comes in first. My uncle is my hero. My two heroes are my uncle Ed Kirby and Lemmy Kilmister, and, and they both absolutely shaped my life. Wow, yeah. that is that's that's. <laughs> I'll tell you, we you're, we're not even fourteen years old yet, and we already got a whole show here. <laughs> Your life is fantastic. <laughs> when did you actually figure out that you wanted to be in a that you could get in a band, and when did you start playing in a band? Uh, fourteen, like right right around like that first couple of months at um. Why? Yeah, why do I think the name of your first band is going to be fantastic, without uh, you even telling me? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was. Um, it, it was. Uh, it was. It was guys. Guys who actually wanted. To, you'll see this recurring theme of people wanting to beat me up <laughs> through the course of my life. Um, so my first day at Brookline High. Uh, you know, I was saying I had my Iron Maiden shirt and a leather jacket and everything like that. And these older guys, these three older guys, come over to the table. One of them has an Iron Maiden shirt on. They're like. You like Maiden, and I'm so dumb. I'm so oblivious. I don't even know I'm about. I'm getting like you know sized up for a beating. I'm like, I love Maiden. <laughs> so you're into metal? Yeah. What else do you listen to? And you know they're grilling me, and I'm not even trying to like come at them, like like one up them or anything like that. I'm just being myself. And I'm starting to tell them, oh well, you know I love uh, a Motorhead. Motorhead's my favorite band. I love Venom, uh, uh, Merciful Fate. Exciter, Voivod, uh, Anthrax, Tank, 
uh, Witchfinder General, Angel Witch, Raven. They had never heard of these bands. They're looking at each other like, huh? You know, they were, they were like, found out they were like Van Halen guys. Like Iron Maiden was the heaviest band they'd liked. And they're looking, they're like, whoa, whoa what are these? I'm like, yeah. Uh, uh, and, they're, and they're just like, oh. No, no, no. I'm like, yeah, do you, do you guys read Kerrang? Do you read Kerrang too? And they're, they're like, what's a Kerrang? Like, oh, hey, listen. Um, after, after school, do you want to come over to my house so we can listen to records? And they're like, uh, yeah, okay. And these guys are going to beat me up. I brought them over to my house and I'm, you know, playing them all like, you know, the, the first Merciful Fade EP. But then also I was listening just because of growing, growing up in Boston that had such a really strong, um, it wasn't even crossover then, but just like people were a lot more open-minded, you know, and also, you know, bought the Boston crew and hardcore was so huge you could you couldn't avoid it like if you were into underground music that was there yeah, too. i was gonna ask so you about so that, like you know i'm sure. like i was i was playing them like ssd and dys and the misfits and, the, and they were like why why do you have these records i'm like what do you mean why do i have these records these are awesome records I'm like but they're, they're punk yeah so but we can't like punk you're like no yeah yes you can it's like listen to venom and then listen to dys there might even yeah. be more but like venom might be more punk rock than dys dude yeah. you know what i mean yeah. It's, so yeah but th- so those guys um, so they didn't beat you up. No, they did. They first band, and we we were we were together probably about three or four months. We rehearsed in the guitar player's basement. His name is Nick Clancy. He was a really good guy. Like we had history for years. Like all good, um, but we we had three songs. Train kept a rolling. Then we did. Then it is like just here's a deep cut. We did a Joe Perry project song. We did Buzz Buzz. Wow! Yeah, Mock Bell was on my show a couple of times. I do. I I actually. Um, yeah. I mean, this is years ago when I first like friended him on Facebook, and it was because I was like, so I'm like, hey, Mister, you know, I'm, I'm I'm like 12 again. I'm like, Mister Bell, I just, Mr. oh, Cow- Mister Cowboy, I just like to tell you, it's an honor to make your acquaintance. Mister Cowboy, Mister Cowboy, <laughs> oh, Mister Cowboy. <laughs> But so we did we did uh, the Joe Perry project, Buzz Buzz, Train Kept Rolling, and then of course we did Ace of Spades. I was like, I'm like, I gotta get one. You guys get one. I gotta get one. And we uh, Brooklyn and I had uh, this year. Every year they had a talent show, and oh, I forgot what it was called. But you had to audition for it, and we auditioned, and we won to get a spot to get in to play. But we between the week of the audition and saying you're in, and then the week that we're gonna play. We broke up, and the the drummer. Here's the recurring thing: the drummer kicked the crap out of me, kicked the piss out of me, dude. Oh yeah. Do you remember the name of the band? Yes, yes. We actually we actually went through two two names within that week. Um, <laughs> within, that week. within the week, we had two different names. First, we were we were Shark, but but the, and that, but they were both my idea because. Um, I'm, That's a good one, Shark. Well, it, nah, but it was. Because I originally wanted to call because I loved Accept. I wanted to call the band Fast as a Shark. Oh, wow. And I mean, this, this, I mean, I'm, dude, this is 30 years before emo when all the bands have like half paragraph names, you know, like her lips leave bruises and whatever. Like sometimes she pees when she cries. But, but, you know, it's like, oh, we want to call the band Fast as a Shark. And I was like, that's, you can't, that's too long. I'm like, well, what about Shark? They're like, okay. And then you we were like, Shark's pretty lame. And I was like, well, what about Ace of Spades? No. Oh, oh shit! I'm sorry. I totally remembered why. So we were we were gonna be called Ace of Spades, and then I took white out, and I was gonna write Ace of Spades on my, on the sleeve of my leather jacket, and I did two. I fucked up two ways. Um, I was running out of white out, so I was in a hurry. I was panicking, and so, but then it came out like I got Ace of, and then in the hurry, I forgot the P, so it was like Ace of Sad. <laughs> I didn't even, and then I ran out. Like so, it was. It could, it could have been Ace of Chardé, but it was just Ace of Sad. And I'm like, what am I gonna do? So then I just, I didn't want to cover the whole thing. I'm like, so well, like I'll cover. I like scratched off because it was white out, so it flaked right off. So I took the of sad off, and I'm like, okay, we're Ace, because because we just I only had enough white out for Ace. Ace. So we were Ace, <laughs> and then um, I actually deserved this beating out of nowhere. Like I, I was, I got really arrogant. Shocking! I'm, I'm. There's the start of something big. My ego. <laughs> um, I I started giving his name. His name is so it was Nick Clancy was the guitar player. Shane Kelly uh, was the drummer, and Shane was all about Van Halen and Night Ranger. She pants. the Karate Kid had Night band. Ranger had, had had the drumsticks in in his pocket like at all times, and I just started 
like bad mouthing him, shit talking him, like trying to make myself look better. I'm like, oh, he's a poser. Oh, he likes Van Halen, you know, all stuff like you know. I'm in, I'm in that like the just starting that like getting that the the blood was in the water for like underground music, and you know, I'm like I'm listening to Venom and Merciful Fates. So obviously, I'm the Antichrist, and you're you're all you're worthless and weak, you know. And and you know, he hears this, they're like, hey, so what's up? Uh, what's up with Keith? What's up with your singer? What do you mean? Oh, he's uh, he's he was just just saw him at Cleveland Circle, and he's just calling you a poser and the f bomb and all the other things. Really, really, and I all of a sudden, you know, like maybe the day a day later, you know, I get to call. He's like, "Hello," he's like, "No," he's like, "Honey, honey, it's Shane." I'm like, "I'm fine, all right." Hey, what's up, Mister Bennett? Look out your window, and I'm like, "Look out the window," and he's at the payphone across the street. <laughs> the payphone. He goes, "You got a minute? You got a minute for a poser f bomb?" Is apparently you can kick my ass, so I, I let, let's let's make it happen. And I, I'm so terrified because I get caught, and he, there's no way I can win a fight with this guy. And I'm, I, but I'm trying to that bravado. I'm like, it's, it'll be a pleasure. I'll be right down. Like, and I'm going downstairs. Like, oh, 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 oh. I I didn't even get one in, man. I just I had I had my hand back, and he just straight train rolling, dude. Just ba 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 ba. Probably took about ten seconds, and I was. Boom, boom. Pat Travers, boom, boom, out, go to lights, man. I was done. <laughs> well, you get so many references you're throwing at me, I can't keep... I'm Sorry. still thinking about King Diamond and Venom over Sorry, there. Man. I mean, it's like, wow. Okay, so <laughs> did you at, at, did you end up getting into a band that was that lasted longer than a week? Yeah. After that, I'm sure yeah. you did um, sooner. Was, um, kind of, kind of. It was uh, probably like 15, 16 uh, the uh, like the first first inclination of Wrecking Crew was um, a legendary Boston band, by the way. Uh, well, uh, well, we shall see. We shall, I'll, I'll, I I leave that to other scholars. I I am I'm not. I'm <laughs> well, not I mean, one. you guys were part of that whole second wave of hardcore, you know, with, with bands like Slapshot and you know, eighty six, eighty five, eighty six. You guys came around a- eighty into eighty six, eighty seven. And there's some guys in that band that were pretty good players, including you. Oh you know? just, no, I was I was I was lucky, man. I I loved I loved. I'm very you know I'm I I'm, I can be self effacing or you know you know t- you know I'm an egomaniac, but I also put myself down a lot. But I'm very proud of that band. I'm very. I mean, yeah, re- didn't very proud uh, of that band. Um, I forget. I know that whole thing got reissued by somebody. They put a package out. Yeah, Bridge Nine. These, yeah, yeah, it's a good it, label. It, it, yeah, it came out. It came out great. I mean, that, that was an honor because Bridge, Bridge Nine is kept Boston. I know I kind of fast forwarded on you. It's okay, but your stories are okay. like it's okay. <laughs> um, when when you started up with Wrecking Crew, did you guys realize what a powerhouse the band was and how people were going to gravitate towards you? We we didn't know about people gravitating towards, but we we knew we were we we knew we were good. Who yeah. was the original lineup? Well, that's you know that's what I alluded to earlier. The original the original original lineup was it was me on bass. Ralph um, was was singing. He didn't he wasn't playing guitar yet. He played guitar, but he he was singing. And um, uh, Dan Parsono from Winchester was on drums, and he had a he had a buddy uh, named Andreas who played guitar, and we I think we played three three shows, um, and, and I mean we weren't good we weren't good and it was no no offense to anybody in the band like it was just you know we 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 had songs that, we had one riff songs and like we I remember one song was like that was the song. <laughs> We're like, okay, well, that's it. Was like, no, 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 that's a riff. You you need a couple of those, and then you might have a song. It's like, uh, uh, I, I don't know, it sounds good to me, you know what I mean? So, but, um, yeah, that that was that was the original. Then, um, then like you know, it was uh, what what most people know as like the, the classic lineup uh, of Wrecking Crew. Uh, the 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 first the first inclination of that was all the guy all the guys who were on the the. A balance of terror record except our our first drummer uh was uh ek who uh, he's play, he played with the eels um then he he joined this he joined the straw dogs then he joined Warzone. Yeah. Then he played with sick of it all he played with world is my fuse he's no joke i mean ek is yeah. ek's a beast man he's yeah. he's been he's he's still playing man he's i, t- I talked to ek well, not talk, you know, these days, like you text, like I, I actually, I hit them up every morning. I have a, I have about a dozen people that I, I send 
the same thing too, like just little check ins, just you know, like you know, bro kind of check in. That's check-in. a good thing to do. Yeah, no, no, no. We it was it was really nice. I mean, we never had any kind of like like intense falling out. I think it was just time and distance kind of thing. But we reconnected in the last like two years, and it's been it's been a blessing. It's been awesome. Yeah. When you guys got the band going, you got you guys started playing in front of a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it. I think it was it was a perfect storm of three things. One was our scene corny but it's true our scene was exploding also um we we were fr- we were friendly with mike gitter from triple x fanzine who was good guy to be friends great with. guy booking all the shows but now i'm get get to the third thing we could we could have been his best friend we could have been paying his rent but if we weren't a good band we wouldn't have gotten we would not have gotten the shows that we did and i'll stand behind that till the day i die At the end of the day we were a damn good band man i when we were on when we when we were on on point i'd i'd put i'd put that band up against any band well in the if world. you had gitter in your corner i've known mike for a long time he he's helped me with a lot of stuff over the years he's his taste in music is he just knows the difference between good and not good yeah, so. yeah. i mean but, but uh you know that you know self uh self i didn't realize that you and gitter were friends and oh, stuff. That's oh yeah cool. yeah yeah i mean he was i mean we, I mean, back then he was like, yeah, we were all super tight because it was all we did. Uh, like everybody, you know, all the all the guys in Wrecking Crew, Gitter. I mean, t- there was just like hundreds of kids, and we all basically like you know lived in Kenmore Square, Kenmore Square, and Harvard Square, and then all all the goths and the skater kids were in Copley. What you bands know? do you remember playing a lot of shows with at that time? Oh Jesus, um, we we played with COC a ton. We played Nuclear Assault a ton. Oh, you got to be opening for touring bands. And oh stuff. yeah, oh yeah, nice. man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then you know just you know Slapshot, Eye for an Eye, um, Raw Deal, <laughs> Killing Time, Token Entry, Sick of It All, Agnostic Front, The Bruisers, uh, Point Blank. Played with everyone. Maelstrom. No, <laughs> I, I, yeah, you know, honestly, we did, and it's, it sounds really arrogant, but we did. Did we you did. go to New York a lot? Oh hell yeah, dude! We, like we the the older. The older um, wave of of Boston, the, the guys the crew, before us, like the Boston guys before crew. us, k- kind of kind of hated us because really? it was like those guys brought like we were we were the assholes who brought New York to Boston. You know there was like they, there was yeah. the beat. They came into the game late. The New York hardcore kids. No, 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 they didn't. They but they had. The, I mean, I'm not trying to be this historian. I'm just saying it's a fact. Like what happened was the original Boston hardcore bands and the original New York hardcore bands. There was a little schism there. Yeah, we like the we the, like knew, we weren't down with anybody. You know, we were the little kids. Like you know, we had the records before we knew these people. Do you know what I mean? So they were, you know, they were kind of like our rock stars. Even in for a scene that doesn't have rock stars, they were our rock stars. So we didn't, we weren't involved in the politics. We didn't know when we didn't know any of the dirt. So you know, I'm listening to get it away. Kids will have their say. Uh, negative effects, and I'm also listening to Age of Quarrel victim in pain united blood i'm not thinking there's any yeah. well you know it's like you can't do this you can't do it. it's the same thing with like well you can't listen to venom and you can't listen to gbh and you can't listen to misfits all at the same time I was like well why not same thing but you know we are our the guys the guys in wrecking crew and like you know all our all our peers in that wave of boston hardcore loved loved new york hardcore do you know what i mean yeah. so it, there was like a little bit everyone of that. became friendly eventually <laughs> we no i i would like to say that that uh Rhett wrecking crew like we did because we we did we brought uh, sick of it all and raw deal and killing time and, and we their first shows out of the tri-state area were with us really yeah, that's yeah, fantastic absolutely i mean it's like and we, we'd go down there and play you know and it's we always those are those are our, our brothers. i used to love the uh yeah. the hardcore matinees at cbgb on sunday afternoons those yeah. things were like fantastic man oh, yeah. so many you'd see a bunch of bands and it'd be great every week and I very really saw fights and stuff there. That's what I would like about it, you know? It was kind of cool. I mean, there were fights. I was going to say, it was like, you just might have been looking right. But I mean, <laughs> honestly, like, I I really nev- never never saw too much, you know, obviously it existed, you know, but I, I I'm never not really... i saying saw- I never saw any fights yeah, and shows. No, I, I, never, I never saw any of the, cra- the crazy shit down there. What I always remember about the New York shows, besides just like, you know, you're, holy shit, you're playing CBs. And then it was like, holy shit, you're playing with all these great bands. And it's like, holy shit, you know, we're all, fr- you know, not like, hey, we're all friends, but like, these are our boys. This is great. This is a really good time. Like, I also remember that we would just go broke. Um, 
like blowing money at Bleaker Bob's and like walking up and down, you know, walking up and down St. Mark's. You know, yeah. like, I could be broke in a block at St. Mark's, not even, you know, and this is before I did, you know, drugs or alcohol. I'd just be like, the next thing you know, it's like, you know, I'd, I'd have 40 bucks in my pocket at the, at the start. You start at Ray's, you get a slice and a, and a Royal Crown. And then, then you'd be walking down the street. Next thing you know, it's like I got three skull rings, a new motorhead shirt, and like a bullet belt. And they're like, and then I'd be borrowing three bucks from somebody for another <laughs> slice. Like, what the? You just had money? What the fuck? Like, no, but look at this. Look, it's look, it's Voivod. It's Sweet two. It's double sided. Oh my god! I yeah. used to live on uh, 10th Street between First and Second, so I was very close to uh, St. Mark's. I spent a lot of time over there. Yeah. It's easy to do that. Um, now, I just want to go back for a second okay. because I wanted to ask you about the original Boston crew and not just the guys that were part of the straight edge scene, but also the Freeze and Gang Green and some of those other bands. Were you influenced by a lot of those bands, too? Well, obviously, we're going to talk about the Chris Doherty benefit in okay. a little while. Sure. But did you were you on to the Gang Green thing early on or were you into the straight edge bands? No, no, no. Well back then back then like what what people consider like like the, the straight edge bands back back then and look i'm not i'm i'm a i'm a generation a little, after you're a little yeah. younger yeah right? the, no, you're the, younger the, than the, yeah those, and all those yeah guys. dude so yeah. please like anybody listening i'm not trying to act like yeah. i was there i was a contemporary like i caught the very tail end and the t- what I caught of the very tail end, I was in back and I didn't, I maybe knew two or three people. So I'm a not lot gonna... of those bands became metal around that time. Oh, yeah, dude, that, okay, that sucked for two reasons. Number one, because I love the second DIY, D, uh, DYS record. I think it's a great record, but the thing is, I didn't want them to change. Do you know what I mean? Like that was, that Neither was, did I. that was, the <laughs> I think I've told of, Dave Smalley yeah. that too. Like I, like, like me and a, a couple of my friends, we legit, like once again, not bragging, this is fact. We were the first metalhead kids at shows. Like, we, you know, we really helped for better or worse, usher in that crossover thing here in Boston. But I remember when all the bands started going they hard rock and metal. And, it, and it's just like, you know, you'd get, you'd feel that heat coming from people. Like you go to show, I was like, "It's you, you all, you poodle head assholes. It's your fault." I was like, no, 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 no. No, I don't want them like this. I don't want this. I don't want. You know what I mean? Like I didn't. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, my SSD is is not breaking up. You know, who? No, 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 no. No, you know, no offense to Al, but nah, man, no. I mean, my 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 SSD is kids. What I was saying, get it away. You know, like I didn't, I didn't want him to change. No. So you knew, you knew all the ba- all those bands. I, I, I knew the, I knew the bands. I knew the music. I, oh, the I music didn't know. I yeah. Knew. Oh yeah. no, Jesus Christ, dude! It was like, yeah, yeah I, lo- I loved, I loved that stuff. I mean, I, I remember when buying all that stuff as it came out, um, and buying it from John Anastas. You know, when there was yeah. only one Newbury Comics, the, like in the middle of Newbury Street, like above the Mexican restaurant. It was him and Amy Mann from Till Tuesday, and and uh, Tammy Heidi. From BCN, they they were the three people who worked there. Do you know what I mean? And it was yeah. like, I, I, dude, I, re, I I remember that. I think I, I think I bought DYS records from the sometimes, guy in DYS. Sometimes I forget you're like a few years younger than me and those guys. I'm sorry, man. Don't, I, why? You, you Don't look young. Sorry, you look young. <laughs> I just think that you, to me, you're part of the whole thing. You know, I kind of. As the years go by, you kind of bunt, put, push, push it all. Oh yeah, together, so the, yeah. yeah the, cob, the cobwebs I mean, get things blurry. Yeah. Man. It's like it's cheesecloth, <laughs> cheesecloth for the soul. <laughs> well, um, so um, we before we you were on, I played we played uh, Grave Robber, uh, Panzer Bastard, which I think formed about what fifteen years ago. We will be celebrating our fifteenth anniversary on June sixth. So we officially started on six six six. You guys have. <laughs> It yep. used to make sense. Yeah. And you guys have a huge catalog, and you've toured a lot. Didn't you go yep. to other countries? And- yeah, we've uh, we've we've been to the UK, UK, Ireland, Scotland, and Brazil. 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 What was that like? Oh, that was mind blowing, mind blowing. Because we like you saw everything, like everything you can imagine. Like just the the size the size of the cities was insane. The um the wildly veering um, levels of um, prosperity, you know, because we post the uh, we posted up like the beginning of the tour and the end of the tour. Uh, the the Brazilian band that we toured with, a uh, brother band of ours called uh, Whip Striker. Um, they lived right in Rio. And uh, Rio de Janeiro. Rio, yes, I want <laughs> to go to Rio. But hey, we're going for a musical theme. 
15 minutes from Copacabana Beach. <laughs> it was a and dude to like to see us like these scumbag rock and roll pirates. Uh, like we're on Copacabana Beach, like everybody else is in like thongs. <laughs> and you know, dude, we're in black stretch jeans and bullet belts and vests, and we're just like, holy fuck, we feel like pirates. We look like pirates. This is great. Let's <laughs> let's drink out of coconuts and you know, bark at the moon. It was amazing. But you'd see you'd see um we actually did um on the same block as as uh the guy from Whipstriker, his his apartment on the same block, uh after the third day of basically stepping over this person it was like this person's dead like this person was wrapped up in a packet like but you would see like it just it, 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 so many so many like the population was just like teeming but then you you would see the, the, you know these stores of ridiculous wealth with like you know machine gun guards like right at the door like right at the i mean heavy firepower and then you, you could look up behind those buildings and you see the favelas you know like they're just like the ghettos and they were like these teetering towers of like like put together pla- like plastic contraptions and, and, and just like sheet metal like just really abject poverty and I mean I'm, I'm dude I don't want to sound like I'm like this advocate for social change you're like here let me tell you about stuff that I discovered that you might not know about it's not like that I'm just saying but to be there it was, it was, holy fuck it was it was, yeah. it was, my, it was mind blowing but like the, like the like Brazilian people like their spirit <clears throat> like their passion unrivaled Absolutely unrivaled, man. I can't. I can't wait to to be able to go back there. I haven't been to South America, but I've been to Mexico a lot, and the similarities, you know, with yeah. the different levels, you know, the rich and the poor, are like pff, people live in shacks and things, yeah. but they love the music, man. Yeah. Um, I know we've been dealing with this pandemic and stuff, but I think I saw on your Instagram page, which is fantastic, by the way, if you want to tell people to follow you, you can, is it just at Keith? I can't remember what your Instagram well, I, is. Well, I do, um, I do, I do Instagram and I, I do Facebook. I'm, pr- I'm more on Facebook. Maybe it's Facebook. I saw yeah, it. Well, they're both like fa- Facebook. It's, it's just my name, Keith, Keith Bennett. And it's, it's a person, you know, it's a personal page. It's not like a, like a, a fan thing or something like that somewhere i saw that pan that the band got together and rehearsed not the whole band have you guys been you no, guys didn't do a re- no 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 um we've i've i've been doing i've been doing other other stuff you know just oh so yeah, you guys oh. haven't got together no, i don't know no, why no, we haven't that. we played our last show december 19th of 2019 you know, like that we, we it was yeah. uh, at, at the. Uh, do you have plans to do stuff with the band? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have a, we have a whole record um, written. It's not recorded, but it's it's all written. Like, and we have eleven songs, like badass songs, done. You know, and then the world went to shit. So yeah, yeah. And um, uh, we have one of our guys is up in New Hampshire, uh, and one of our guys is down in Florida at the moment. So we just we just want to wait until things kind of unfuck itself. Hopefully yeah. soon. I mean, uh, hopefully soon. I'm, but you know what? I'm in, I'm in a rush. I'm not in a rush. Sorry, I'm not in a rush whatsoever because I don't want to go through this ever again in my Me life. Me neither. So, so I'm getting my I second shot tomorrow. So I'm like, thank you. I mean, I've been waiting, you know, for a while. You know, yeah. it's a long month in between shots. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the Chris Doherty benefit because I was living in Pittsburgh when that happened, and I know you were very involved in that. And you played in the All Star Band. What was that like for you? Dream that would that honestly that was a dream come true. Really Chris is going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. Oh, so that's I'm awesome! Excited to have him. Awesome. Yeah, you were with uh, the Stilfin brothers and uh, Jr. Jr. JR from and Black. drums and um, uh, Rock and Bob, Bob, Rock and Bob, and uh, Johnny Yaya. Johnny Yaya was also on. Uh, what were the rehearsals like? Awesome, and it was it, it was so fun because that's the, that's the thing. I was like you know was was talking a little earlier about um, you know guys were heroes. And then it, it's it's just this really, it's 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 cool, and I'm very grateful to, I'm l- lucky that um, there's a lot of people that, you know, I they I they growing up I had their pictures on my wall and like post like flyers and going to see them at shows that I'm I'm really honored and privileged to say that they're actually friends of mine. How did you get involved? Did the Stilfin brothers contact you or JR or how did that how did it happen? I honestly forgot, man. I forgot. I really do. You and I, Dave Tree switched off on vocals, right? Yeah, he he 
he killed it, man. He was. He was you he killed it, man. Cool. I saw the video. I, I, <laughs> I hate, dude. I, you keep, that was that was. You know, you had to step up. You can't let that down. It was like because I mean, you know, number one, it, it's it's for it's for Doherty, who's a, who's a hero. You're then I'm playing playing with some heavy hitters who are also heroes. Then all the other bands on the bill are heavy hitters. And it's at the place where I I grew yeah. up, you know. Paradise like I start theory. I started going to shows at the Paradise when I was twelve. Started working there when I was seventeen. That was that's home. That's like the Holy Grail. You know what I mean? It was like how you better you better fucking bring Beyond an A game. Do you know what I mean? Like that Were you, was you door guy there? No, uh, no, 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 no. I when I started, I I was just I got the job just by default because um, I would always be uh, I'd be the first kid in line. Like I'd I'd be out at the I'd be out front for like the matinee shows I'd be out there at noon, for real like and then like even at the nighttime the nighttime all ages shows like I'd still be there at noon because like I want to be I want to be front center front row center so I could headbang, and then you know you'd get to know the the guys working the parents because you know they'd be coming, you know coming into work at like three o'clock in the afternoon they'd be like oh you again I knew I'd see you <laughs> I I said it was one of these shithead Might metal well give a job. it's like what you, yo for real because like what would happen is you know I'm sure these guys especially at the matinee shows they'd be hung over from the night before maybe they hadn't even slept and you know they'd be like be like hey do you, do, do you need a hand like yeah all right kid sure come on and I just start I just start like you know mo- helping out just to get in for free and then uh one day I was doing it, and uh, D- Jess Ford, uh, who was one of the managers at the time, uh, he, I, I forget exactly what he said to me, but he was talking to me, like, not in a bad way. He wasn't, like, you know, ordering me around, but he he had assumed I had already worked there, and he was like, hey, can you, oh, no, I know. It was like, hey, uh, Keith, when you get done with that, can you go to the walk-in, because uh, they uh, t- uh, set up the dressing room? And I was like, I, I, I don't, what are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like don't. You work here, right? <laughs> and I was like, no. He's, he's like, you do now. He, no, he was straight up. He's like, he's like, you want a job? I'm like, yeah. He goes, okay, cool. When you get when after sound check, come come up to the office and we'll we'll, we'll sort you out. And I'm like, okay. And then we get up there, and, and then you know, I fill out the paperwork, hand it over to him, and he goes, so, uh, yeah, you you made a couple of mistakes on the on the on the uh, the application. I'm like, what? He goes, you're 18. No, I'm not. I'm not. He's like, <clears throat> you're 18. You're eight. You're 18. Idiot, you're eighteen. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm what year 18, was man. that? Do you remember? Uh, eighty-seven. <coughs> wow. 80, eighty-seven, eighty-eight. Wow. Yeah, but yeah. So when I started, I was just so we used the gopher the wrecking crew. You weren't even eighteen yet. Yeah. Well, I just seventeen, seventeen wow. into eighteen, and um, at the paradise, I was just the gopher. You know, I give me like a, 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 you know, duct tape everything down. <laughs> carry everything you know like wrap stuff up and then yeah it was and then i i was i had a run as the world's worst monitor engineer <laughs> a, a legendary i didn't know anything i've ruined multiple concerts like multiple concerts there was a uh, lenny kravitz there was a it was a radio broadcast for bcn i was so bad that not only could they not broadcast the show lenny kravitz's tour manager they had they had sent him to betty ford to to clear to clean out because they you know Lenny wanted because him of you no no I sent him back he went off the wagon that night because I was so horrible yeah oh yeah you know what I love about you man is you're very honest <clears throat> I'm gonna get a little deep with you right now okay because I know that you'll talk about this cool you've gone through a recovery period pretty much uh well I've, I've started I mean I'm gonna be in recovery for the rest of my life. How long ago did you start? When did you realize it was time to change what was going on in your life? Uh, well, I, I knew for a long time, but last last October is when um, during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yep. rough time. I was, I, dude. I'm not special. It was rough for everybody. You know, I'm not, I'm not better than because because that it just that was just perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing to to you know the world's going to shit. Why don't you go with it? So when I saw you walking down the alley, I was thinking, dude looks healthy as hell, man. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, you feel real good right now. I, I do, I do. I'm, I'm I'm I got a second chance, man. You know, so I yeah, I just, yeah. What can you say to some of the people out there? Because we all know about addiction and stuff. <laughs> I mean, what can you say to the people out there that are thinking about making these changes and they're having a hard time doing it? Well, Jesus, um, number one, I completely understand. I I do get it. You know, when 
when you when you, you hear it's it's hard to hear when you're when you're in it, you know. Um, it, By the way, I asked you if we could talk. Oh about yeah, this no, 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 you no, came no, in. I don't want people out there to think like, why would he ask that? Question? No, 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 no. For anybody who's listening, me and me and Steve are family. We go we go back decades and decades. And even if you weren't, even if I just met you, man, it's like it's it's my responsibility. It's important to talk it's my, about. Yeah, it's, this. it's responsibility. You, you have you have to share. You have to share. I told you, and I'm not afraid to tell anybody. I my drinking got way out of hand during the pandemic, and I, I it's been two months since I had a drink because I was just going overboard. You know, I just couldn't. And, and it, it, I'm not going to blame everything on the pandemic because you have stuff inside of you, you know? Of course. That's why I feel like it would be good for you to talk a little about that, oh, you know? Yeah, gladly, man. Gladly. Um, yeah, it's it's hard. Like I was saying, it's hard to hear when when you're in your 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 hell. That's that's dramatic, but it's true. It's it's hard to hear somebody be like, "I know how you feel," because you straight up think you're like you, you're unique and you're suffering. Um, but it, it is, it is true. It's just, um, it, it's terrifying. It's, it's terrifying to admit it's terrifying to take those first steps. But w- one thing I, I do, I can say, I can absolutely say with a hundred percent confidence is if you do it, there are amazing people who actually, they care. You know, you might not care whether you live or die, but there are people out there who absolutely care about you and they want you to survive and they want you to have a, the, the life that you deserve. They want you to have a really good life. It's, and it's, it's, it's doable. Yeah. I fuck. That sounds stupid. It's not, it's not, it's not doable. I'm just saying it's, it's not impossible. How about that? It's not impossible. Well, it's, I'm happy for tough. you, man. Thank you, bro. And uh, I really appreciate you coming down here, man, and, and being on the show. And I wish you the best of luck. I know that you're going to be out there rocking and doing your thing, man. I, 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 yeah, I mean, I just, I just want to play. I just want, you know, that, that's this, this is what I do. I, you know, I do, I'm a one-trick pony, man, and it's, it's my, my trick is to <laughs> fool people into thinking I know what I'm doing musically. And I, I just, I just want to play. I want to play with my, my band. I want to, I, you know, I want to get loud for people, you know. I miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, Keith Bennett. Thank you very much for coming on the show, man. Thank you, brother. All righty. The bright lights and rock and rolls got to me. I feel the stage is burning under my feet. It's got to me. I'm on the go, rocking my life away. I want reaction. I'll get it the hard way.
Okay, you just heard the Outlets Bright Lights from the 2007 album entitled The Outlets Rock 1980, which was recorded by Ethan DeSalt in the, at the previous New Alliance studio, which was located in Central Square in Cambridge. I do kind of miss that place. They called it the EMF building. It was a cool hangout, but we're in a cool hangout right here where the new studio is located. So um, this um, this great record is interesting because when they decided to get together and do it with the original lineup, they recreated their old set list from the early 80s. And um, that track right there was originally a single and they re-recorded and I think they did a great job on it. The reason I played that is, is a lot of people ask me about the outlets you know now I've worked with many great bands over the years that I've told you guys about and there's always the ones that people come up to me and they want to know things about like poison and the neighborhoods and the great cat and Ronnie Montrose and the charms who you hear every week doing the theme song on this show and you know I even get questions like oh so you worked for Michael Douglas what was that like you know and you know they want to hear stories about giant records and Roadrunner and they want to hear what happened between the charms and little Steven you know they want to hear these things so I'm not afraid to like talk to you about talk to you about things like this transparency is something you are you're always going to get here and um, you know of course living back here in the Boston area now where where fans around here like really know their history of Boston rock always want to ask me about the out they always ask me about the out outlets and why the band wasn't huge uh, they were so great live people want to know why didn't it always translate you know to record you know the whole new world record for example it's it, it's not the same level of energy it actually did reach that level though on the outlets rock 1980 album which we just played you the song bright lights from they finally got it right after multiple Multiple attempts and don't get me wrong Dave and Rick Barton will always be guys I love and respect I've given David an open invitation to come on the show but for some reason he doesn't like to do interviews and I respect that and there's nothing you know nothing bad I can say about that if he doesn't want to do an interview he doesn't same with Rick anytime Rick wants to come on this show he's invited but honestly I'm not uh, sure they can answer this question that's being presented to me and I don't think they lose a lot of sleep thinking about it it's a funny business this music thing I've seen bands with half as much talent sell a million records it's all about timing it's all about being in the right place at the right time knowing the right people to me the outlets you know are always going to be a band that's going to be entrenched in the history of Boston rock. They're one of the great Boston rock bands, you know. They, they're they part of the original, like, huge scene that happened, which I like to say was from 75 to 85, you know. And it's like, you can't disregard anything that you can hear. It's like, this, you know, you're going to find so much great music that matters from that era, and the outlets are right up there. Um, and, you know, they rocked out on that record just like it was 1980. And um, a couple people have asked me about the outlets lately, so I figured I would just talk about them for a minute. All right, let's give a shout out to Baby Loves Tacos in Pittsburgh, Isidore's in Oxford, the Record Archive in Rochester, New York, the Diesel Cafe in Davis Square, Somerville, My Virtual Gal, Tang Records in San Diego, the Moonbeam Cafe in Oakmont, PA. Hi, Nina. <laughs> the sponsor of this show, of course, Notch Brewing in Salem, Mass. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, they have a new venue popping up in Brighton very soon. They're going to have a live performance and music space there. So that's going to be really exciting. And also all the other mom and pops and independent stores out there. Keep on supporting them, man. They're the ones that make the world go round. Speaking of support, if you want to support this podcast, we're on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Twisted Rico. By the way, you can also hear me 
on another podcast or two. One's called Seems to Me. It's with my good friend, my witty and lovely friend, Sibylline Seriano. And soon you'll be hearing another podcast called We're Coming for Your Band that I've already recorded two shows with Duncan Wilder Johnson, who's been on this podcast a few times. So stay tuned. I want to thank Nick Z here at New Alliance East and Sun River for doing a great job once again. Until the next time we say goodbye, keep the rock and roll alive. Live. We love you, Busy Phillips. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready, Mr. Ricardo. I'm ready for you, too. We're rolling. I thought so.